What's up guys, Gusto7 and today this is part 4 in a video going through the key dominator software for your bloody keyboards. The keyboard that I'm on right now is the Lightstrike 720 keyboard, but it works for all of your bloody keyboards. Uh, this video I'm going to show you how to um, use the different features and create macros. And in the next video we'll be going through actually setting up our first macros. But I want to just show you uh, the screen and how to get you an understanding of how to actually create macros. Uh, if you need a review on how to get the software, get keys bound, or using the super combo, make sure you check out the previous parts, and there should be links in the description of the video. So what you want to do is click on Oscar Macro over here, and macros are going to be ways that you can run series of predetermined executables, and it's very detailed. Um, so let me take you through exactly how this works. Uh, you can see I'm still in my Diablo game folder from before. You can do this by clicking File, New Folder, and naming it really, you know, whatever you want. Um, but we're going to stay here in um, Diablo, and we're just going to click uh, New File, and we'll just call this Diablo. All right, so here we are at our macro, and let me show you the various uh, features of this. So this is your logic processor right here. The logic processor is uh, pretty confusing at first, but it helps you create more advanced macros. So you can do things like set up various repeats. You can do things like uh, making sure that it will run through, you know, like three times and then break. Um, and there's ways to do that. You actually can set things up. Um, I will show you briefly how this works. So let's say that line one is going to be set to variable equals 100. We would run something here. Um, and then down here, we would do variable A equals variable A plus one. Now variable a no longer equals 100. So we can actually create an if variable a equals 100, jump back to line 1. So this would allow it to, if it got here, it would jump back up to the top, but then when it comes here, uh, it would default to adding 1 to the variable, so it would break out and stop jumping. So that's uh, the first thing is the logic process. Let me delete these lines here. And while I'm deleting the lines, I'll show you uh, these buttons. This is your actual macro uh, window. You've got your save, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, move up, move down, delete, and record. And these three buttons work basically the exact same as the super combo in the previous video. This is going to be a non-repeat, a single execute. Um, this one is going to be like the B, where it will execute when you are holding it. And this is going to be like the C combo, where you execute and then you push it again to toggle or to stop. So we're going to leave it on A class on the non-repeat. All right, we've been over to the uh, logic process. This is delays. Just like in the super combo where you click on the little you know, clock to add a delay, here you just click on this. And this is more advanced because you can actually, you know, I was saying in the last one, it's all in milliseconds. This, we can actually create a 20-second delay and add it right into the macro. So you can uh, set this between minutes, seconds, or milliseconds. And there's the insert delay when you press or insert delay when you release. I'll just say as a rule, you almost always want these checked. There are some instances when you wouldn't, but um, I'll show you how at the end of the video how this would work if you don't have it pressed. It, the keys will all try to register at the exact same time and they'll be fighting with each other who's going to register first, and you don't want that. It will make sure that keys get missed. So as a rule, you pretty much always want to leave these checked. This box down here is your mouse coordinates. There's two different ways to track coordinates, absolute and relative. Uh, this is the best way I can explain it. If my cursor position is starting here and I want to move to the bloody logo, I start it here and I move it there. Um, that's my absolute cursor position. So if this is where I want to move the mouse, even if my starting position is here, it's going to move to the bloody. No matter where my cursor starts, it's always going to end on the bloody logo. Uh, a relative position means it's going to move the mouse um, <clears throat> relative to uh, what I just did. So if that means if the mouse is here and I moved it like that to bloody, if my mouse starts here, it's going to relative move the same approximately distance uh, <clears throat> across the screen where my previous move was. So most of the time, absolute coordinates is going to be what you want. And in order to log an absolute coordinate, you click on this little target, you drag it on the screen to where you want. Let's say I want the bloody logo. You release, and you click the arrow to insert those mouse coordinates into your macro. This section down here is your mouse buttons. You've got your left, middle, right click, and you've got forward and backward. That's up and down on the scroll wheel. And if you have a five-button mouse, you've got your four and five-button mouse. So you combine 
uh, left clicks, you can bind any anything that you can do on your mouse, including where you move the mouse. So that'll come in handy when we create a macro, and uh, you can set that up as well. And then this is actually just using the keyboard to input. Now, when you click on your macro window, you can use the keyboard. Oh, there we go. You can use the keyboard to uh, just start typing. But there's a one time that you do want to use this in particular. And if you'll notice, when I push Enter, it doesn't record the Enter key, and that's because the Enter key uh, is doing something else here. So if you want to insert an Enter press, which you may want to, for example, Enter is my uh, default binding when I want to chat. So if I want to chat, what I have to do is pull this up that will record the press and release of the enter button. When you've got a macro ready to go, you can actually click the test button and this will pull up a test, push spacebar to see if your macro ran correctly. Um, <clears throat> this will also allow you to test it right in here. You can see exactly what it's doing. But if you click test and this is just running and running and running, you might have a problem with your macro. Maybe it's running indefinitely and you didn't want it to. So you can click clear and uh, that will break it out of that and you can try uh, to create your macro again. So there you have it. That's a brief overview of how to uh, create a macro. I'll show you real briefly how we're going to create our first one. It'll be a simple um, text entry macro. And uh, let me, I'm sorry, here in these key clicks, let me get this all deleted. All right, so let's create a very basic macro. And then in the next video, I'll show you some in-game examples and we'll create some more advanced macros. Um, so let's actually switch this to Office. I like to do everything uh, in Office when I would run it, you know, not in a game. I just, I use this folder. All right, so let's create the macro. New Hello World. All right, so what this macro is going to do is it's going to just write the words Hello World on my screen. So um, we're going to click in the window. There's not going to be any logic processing or anything. But what we're going to do, I'll, I'll briefly show you this. Let's first turn off delays and type this. Hello, world. Very simple. Uh, we will save the macro as hello, world. And we'll go bind it to F5. Apply. Let me create a text document here. And when we run this, look at that. It didn't get all the keystrokes. And the reason why it got world correctly, but it didn't get the hello correctly, because it was fighting. It was trying to go too fast. So let's fix that really quickly, and I'll show you what to do. We go back to our macro, hello world. And we'll actually just delete hello world and recreate it, so I don't have to um, get all of those. Uh, click that 27 times. There really needs to be a delete all button. but. Uh, because there's not right now, we'll just work it this way. Hello world, we'll create it. Office. Hello world. Now this time, let's insert a even just short 20 second, 20 millisecond delay. Type hello world again. Save it. Now let's go bind this to hello world. Apply. There you go. Once we added the delays, it was able to get all the keystrokes. So there you have it. We've created our first very basic macro. Uh, that's going to be the end of this video. I will show you in the next video how to create more uh, advanced macros for productivity as well as for um, getting the competitive edge in gaming, some really cool things. So be sure to check out that video. Hopefully this was helpful. Click that like button if you learned something. And I'll see you in the next part if you want to learn about advanced uh, macro creation. Thanks for watching.